Welcome back, everybody. Our next presenter is Marissa Ryan. Um, I don't personally know Marissa yet. Um, she comes highly, 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 highly recommended. The simple truth is that, ladies and gentlemen, she can communicate with spirits that are not here in the body. Spirits and spirit guides. We are in for a treat. Please welcome Marissa Ryan. Well, thank you, Bob. That was a great introduction. So, um, welcome, and I'm excited to be here. And what I'm going to be doing tonight is talking a little bit about how I got started and what I do and how I do it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the fact that you can do it also. And what's interesting to me is um, talking about UFOs. I, I don't have a lot of UFO experience. Um, I've believed in it since I was a little kid. My dad used to always talk about going for a ride in a spaceship, and I thought it was a great idea. But I didn't have a lot of experience until I did a, a conference um, last August. And it really opened up kind of a portal for me because ever since I did that, my readings have completely changed. Um, I not only am communicating with spirits um, of humans that have passed, and I communicate with spirit guides, but what I've noticed is now I'm actually having alien spirits stand in front of me, and it's been really, really interesting. And um, it's, it's actually, I, I really enjoy it, but what I've realized, because um, I really never thought about it before, is by me uh, doing one of these conferences, it's like I've told the universe, okay, I understand, I believe in this, and and all of a sudden these things start happening and aliens have a soul as humans have a soul and so they pass as well and they come in to communicate with me so don't be surprised if uh, some of our friends from other planets come in tonight and um, the other thing too is it's, it's really interesting I, I love being in these conferences because I feel like I'm surrounded by old souls you know, pretty much a lot of times when I do this, I'm, I'm around young souls and, and people that they're skeptic and they're not really sure of what's going on. But what I've noticed is by walking the halls and interacting with people is that I'm really among friends and family that are, you know, like-minded. And it's been really, really fun. And I just, I'm, I'm really appreciate being here and I'm very excited about being here. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, me and what I do, most psychics and mediums that you talk to have been doing this since they were born. They were born with a gift and they, they've been seeing spirits since they were a little kid and I can honestly say that has never happened to me. Um, I did not do this as a child. Um, I, I, you can ask my husband, I mean we've been together 22 years and I never talked to spirits until it was a good seven years ago. And it just kind of happened to me overnight. So I'm going to tell you a little bit, of, so you kind of know where I'm coming from. Um, I was just an everyday person. I was a sales rep in the gift industry. I was a mom with three kids. And um, I, we had a tragedy in our family. My, my mother died on Thanksgiving, and two days later, my niece died of unknown causes. And it was the first real death experience that I personally had experienced. And, so I started questioning. I, I was questioning God. I was questioning the universe. I was questioning everything about life and death and is there an after. And I started doing some reading and some research. And then what happened was um, about two years after doing some research, um, after they passed, I kind of, you know, I ended up having my daughter and I just was getting on with life. And then all of a sudden, everything changed. One day I was at my computer and I was opening an email. Somebody had sent me an email about a girl that had been missing and she'd been murdered and she was from where I used to live, where I grew up in. And I had recently moved a good 40 miles away and her body was found out by where I now live. So it was kind of, you know, coincidence. It was really interesting. So I was looking at this article, I was reading it, and then what I realized is 
I don't know anything about this girl at all. I've never met her, I've never seen her. So I turned off my computer, but when I turned around, she was standing in front of me. And at first, it, it took me a minute. Now, and let me give you a little history. It, it, it didn't really scare me because I, I have a law enforcement background. I'd been through the police academy, and I had, you know, I was kind of used to seeing things like that. So it didn't really scare me. So I just kind of looked at her, and, and she was standing there, and I could see her outline. I could see what she was wearing, but I could see through her. But I was actually seeing her with my eyes. And she was dripping with blood and showing me her entire murder. It was like a movie that just started playing over and over and over. And then I was just like, well, what do I do with this? And she's like, you've got to call the police. You need to call them and tell them that I've come to talk to you. And so, of course, I'm thinking, are you kidding? I'm not going to call them and tell them that. They're going to think I'm a nut. <laughs> so it was like, if you've, how many people here have seen the movie Ghost? Okay, that movie was so well done. It's, it's amazing, except for the little shadow people that take away the bad guys. That doesn't happen. But it's like I went to bed, and that whole night, it was almost like she was singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall in my ear. She was just there, and she was all, I mean, she really wasn't singing, thank goodness, but she was just going on and on about, you've got to help me, you've got to help me, and I was just like, I, I, I can't do this. This is, I mean, you're dead. I can't tell someone I saw you. So finally, after, you know, the whole night, the next day, here I get in car to go to work, and she's sitting next to me. And she's just, she's not going to leave me alone. So finally, I said, okay, I, I went home, I got the article and I called up the detective as I said I you know what I've talked to this murdered girl she came to me and of course he's he's like well what'd she have to say <laughs> and I said well she told me you haven't found her head yet and he said well I think we need to meet with you <laughs> so it's like all of a sudden they want they're now they're interested and so and I, and I have to tell you at this point I thought I was making it all up. I thought I was just, I was just like very vivid imagination and thought I saw, I had no clue that it was real. I just thought, oh, I'm making it up. So I meet, I meet the detectives in the parking lot of a Target and I you know, get out of their car and they've got this file with my picture on it. <laughs> it's like my driver's license all blown up. And they start asking me all these questions. What does your husband do for work? You know, what do you do for work? And how do we know that you're, you're not involved in this? And then I started realizing they thought I was the murderer's girlfriend trying to turn them in. So I said, well, you know what? She says we've got to go somewhere. So she, we, the, they followed me. She was in the car. She drove me 15, 20 miles all around this area by a lake. And then we stopped and then we got out. And I said, you know, this is an area she says that was part of her was at. And by this time, I mean, they're not saying anything to me. I, I still think I'm making it up, right? And then all of a sudden, they looked at me and they said, okay, you're right, yeah, we, we did find some things there. And then it just, I started gaining their confidence all, at the same time that I feel like I'm making it up. And, I'm, and of course, my husband's telling me, hey, you're, you're nuts, you know, you, you haven't seen anything. And I, I'm saying, I'm telling you, this is real. So I'm, I'm sketching the men that did this, and I'm faxing them, and they're calling me up and they're saying, you know, we think we know who did this and it's identical to the sketches, down to the acne scars on their face that you drew. We think it's them. And so they finally came and brought the case file. I worked for a good eight months on this case. I was out in, in uh, you know, shrubs up to here with mice running over my feet searching for her body. So, I mean, they had found her body and they had found parts, but I was still searching for her head because I'm like, I have to finish this. I have to finish it. And so Within about two weeks of her coming to me and getting my attention, which she did it in a very loud way, I started having spirits follow me everywhere. They were in my car. I would go into a Hallmark store to meet with one of my clients and they would be standing. I mean, next thing I know, there'd be a man standing behind the manager and he's got smoke coming out of his head. And I'm saying, did your brother die in a fire? Because he's smoking. I mean, he's like standing behind you and he's smoking. And they'd be like, yeah. And, it was, and I realized what, what was really interesting is I started just blurting things out of my mouth about people that had died. And the response was actually quite good. I was really surprised because I thought for sure people were going to never speak to me again. 
and they were they were really receptive so I just it's like I started doing this and spirits would ride in my car and they would they would bug me until I would make phone calls and I would give messages and I would walk through the malls and I would see families that were spirits and they would follow people through the mall and they would say things to me like isn't she beautiful or you know tell her I love her and some things I couldn't say because you know then I would really feel weird to say it to some stranger but I just started doing this and before I knew it within six months I was doing radio shows and I started teaching classes and one of the things that I really realized is that you guys can do it too I at first thought, how can this happen to me? There's five people in the whole world that can do this. You know, there's five people and they're all on TV. And then I realized that's not true. There's thousands of people. And what's happening is, is there is an awakening that's going on on this planet, probably universe, and people are waking up. And I've noticed that it's usually like between 35 and 55. There's something about that age that they're all waking up and I was I was about 35 when when I woke up and pe but people are they're waking up they're seeing things they're sensing things and they're stressed out because they don't know what to do with it or they have felt strange their entire life they have felt like they didn't fit in their entire life and I'm here to tell you you guys aren't strange this is real it's really happening and why is it happening? I feel that our world is evolving to a completely different state of mind. And I think that we're gearing towards peace and love instead of greed and fear. And that these gifts, thank you. These gifts are meant to be shared because of the healing that goes on. One of the things that's really important to me is validation. Because what I've realized, at first it was like, okay, if I do sit down with somebody, what's the purpose? What's the point of me sitting down? Anybody can say, your grandmother's here, she loves you, and she's around you all the time. That's a pretty simple thing. To me, that's not good enough. You've got to have validation. The reason is, is because if I'm sitting with somebody, and I want them to hear whatever healing message is coming through, they've got to believe I'm really talking to the person they're here to talk to. Because once they believe that, then the healing begins. They actually hear the messages. So that is extremely important. So if you ever go to get a reading from someone, make sure they're giving you validation. And stay away from the windows with the neon sign. <laughs> Don't give your wedding rings to anyone to clean. Don't give $300 to have curses taken off because those, those really are not spiritual people. So it's important for you to always question and to always be a skeptic. Now, how do I do this? Well, everybody, I believe, 90% of the people have the gift. Some are more advanced than others. How do I do it? Well, I've kind of perfected my own system. And it's, it's interesting, I just titled myself a couple weeks ago that I, I believe I'm the talk show host to the spirit world. Because what I do is I interview spirits. I actually ask them questions to get the information instead of sitting back and, because a lot of them will ramble about things that make no sense to me and that I really am, don't care about, that I need to get information to help this person know that it's them. So I interview them. So to talk about what, how do I work, first of all, I am clairvoyant, which means I have the ability to see. I can see with my eyes occasionally, but I can see with my mind. It's very rare for spirits to come to you in a solid form. It takes a lot of energy for them, and it's, it's literally not safe for you, especially if you want to stay sane. If you had spirits walking around in solid form, you would know who was alive and who was a spirit, and it could, be, it could cause insanity very quickly. The other gift is clairaudient, and that's the ability to hear. Occasionally I'll hear with my ears, but usually it's with my mind. I can hear words, I can hear tones, tones of voice. Um, I can hear um, sadness, I can, I'll see words, which to me is still clairaudient. And the most common is the clairsentient. 
And this is what I, I have taught probably thousands now. Of people have taken my classes. And everybody wants to see. I want to see, I want to see. And I'm like, you know, I'll be careful what you wish for. Because sometimes things will come in that you don't want to see. And a lot of people have a difficult time seeing spirits because, first of all, you've got to admit, most of us are kind of like, I call them kind of control freaks. You know, we like to control our environment and what's around. And the thought of something popping in on you in front of your eyes and you don't have control over can be very scary. So that's why it's not that common to be clairvoyant. But the most common is the clairsentient, which is the ability to know. You just know. You don't know how you know it, but you know it. You feel things. You can feel goosebumps. You can feel um, sensations in the body. I use this gift of clairsentient to find out how somebody has died. Because what I'll do is ask them, how did you pass? And allow them to f let me feel what they felt at the time of their passing. And this to me is, is very important for validation reasons because there's so many ways to die. I didn't realize how many ways there are to die until I started doing this. There's a lot of ways to die. And it's very validatable to find out if somebody, you know, jumped off the top of a church or drowned in a bathtub. There's so many different ways. So I use that to feel. I can also feel emotions, sadness, happy. I've had, I've had spirits make me burp <laughs> through the entire, I mean, this one guy was a beer drinker to the end, and I burped through the whole session. <laughs> it was just completely embarrassing, but I got the point across. They can make you yawn. They can make you sneeze. All this is part of clairsentient, the ability to feel, feel pain, feel sadness, feel depression. And that's the most common with probably most of you are very, very clairsentient. You know when you're standing next to somebody who you really don't want to be around. You can sense sadness or fear. Um, and then you've got what they call psychic vampires when you've got, and I'll just say it's usually friends and relatives, but <laughs> when they're calling you all the time and they're telling you, you know, their sad stories or all the negative things going on in their life, and then you hang up the phone and you're drained. You're like, what just happened? I'm completely wiped out. That is clairsentient. That is being empathic. That's the ability to be able to feel, even though sometimes we really don't want to feel that kind of stuff. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the process of crossing over. Um, in my talk show uh, that I do with the spirit world, I do a lot of interviewing. And I always ask every single spirit, how was your passing? Show me how it was. Who came for you? And how was your life review? And after a good three or 400 of them all showing me the same thing, I started realizing there's something to this. So I started realizing that we do go through a life review because they've all shown it to me. And it's pretty scary, some of it. And I kind of call this. Um, your personal judgment day. Usually when you die and your, your physical body dies and your spirit leaves the body, which believe me, your spirit can leave the body before your body dies. If you're in a coma or you have Alzheimer's or, or it's very tragic, you're like, I'm out of here. I don't want to be in here anymore. It's way too confining. So your, your spirit can actually leave before, which is very common and usually when you die in your spirit, you're still on a human level. You're still, you have the human memories. So you're a little bit afraid. And you'll have somebody that will come down to collect you that's usually somebody you know. It's somebody you recognize, a family member, sometimes even a pet. Believe me, dogs are the first ones to, to like move everybody out of the way to get to you. And they'll come down and they'll actually collect you. And they'll have you go with them. And it usually is kind of a dark hallway or tunnel, so to speak, with this bright light. In fact, I think I'm in the tunnel now. <laughs> I see the light. It's like all of a sudden you're all spots. No, it's, it's like this, I'm telling you. It's like very, very dark. And then this light is so bright, you can't even open your eyes. And then you get to the other side, and it's a huge celebration. It's a celebration with people that you know and have known you. When we cross over, 
We don't go over as John or Mary and stay John or Mary. We cross over and we become the soul that's had many lives. We have the memories of all the lives that we've had. And I get this question a lot. People will say, well, what do they look like? When I do these readings, they actually will look like the human that passed because otherwise, I mean, I could say what they really look like and nobody would know that that was their Uncle John. Nobody. So I'll, they'll appear to me how they looked when they died or usually their younger years because that's their best look and they're like, I'm going to show up looking 20 pounds lighter and, you know, no wrinkles. So they'll show up in all different forms. But if you, like, how many people have seen the movie Cocoon? This is the only way that I can describe what they look like. When I've actually asked them to remove their human image and show me what they look like, it's exactly that. It's amazing. It is this golden bright light of energy, but there is a head shape, there's arms and legs, and, and it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. There's usually a darkness where there's eyes, but that's how they really look when they're not in human form. Um, unfortunately, that's hard to describe in a reading, so it's usually, you know, the guy's in a striped pen soup and he's got white shoes, you know, white shoes on. So I've got to give them what they look like in human form, but that's what they look like. So now they've crossed over and they've been greeted by their families, their animals, and they feel like, you know what, okay, this is good. I'm actually dead. I'm dead now. And even though they're really not dead, but then all of a sudden they start remembering what they knew when they came here. They, they, they get those memories back of what they can do. You know what's amazing? How many spirits like to eavesdrop? I get so many that say, just tell her I'm in the shower. It's just tell her I'm watching her sleep or I'm jumping in her dreams. They love it. They feel like they're a fly on the wall and they can do all these really interesting things and they get excited about it. So anyways... To go on to the life review, this is the most interesting thing that they all have shown me. They're taken into this room, and in this room is this, I call it a globe. It looks like the top half of a snow globe. It's glass, it's round, and you look into it, and you're shown your entire life. And now, and I mean important parts of your life, not brushing your teeth, or standing on the scale, the important parts of your life and what you said and what you did to the people in your life and how it affected them. It kind of reminds me of It's a Wonderful Life, but then it also makes me think, wow, do I want to see this in my life review? Maybe not. For some people, their life review is beautiful and they go, you know what? I was pretty good, not bad. There's others that will t I'll say, how was the life review? And they'll go, I don't want to talk about it. There are some people, I've talked to, you know, abusers. I've talked to child molesters. I've talked to uh, alcoholics. I've talked to people with addictions that were very brutal to their families. And those are difficult life reviews. So they set in judgment usually of themselves and no one else, but it's an incredible learning experience. It's the way we evolve to another level. It's the way that our soul prepares to come down again, which by, in a matter of fact, that's a choice. You don't have to come back. Most of you will. And I know for a fact I'm not on my last life, darn. But that's how it works is this life review and it's very very interesting that I, I like to ask them how it was and it's the answers I get are amazing suicides talk to a lot of suicides suicides act they what they do is usually when the family greets them before they go into their life review they're taken into what's I would call it kind of like counseling to prepare them because it's kind of like having a contract to come here and you broke it you know Although a lot of times I don't blame them for breaking it. It's a pretty scary place here. It's tough to make it here sometimes. But suicides do go to the other side, and I only know that because I've talked to thousands of them. And most of them are at so much peace that they're finally gone. So with that, I think I've kind of summed up on how I do this. 
And what I want to do is I'm going to go around. It's really hard to see you guys, but I'm going to go around. And I want to do, I can't obviously read everybody because there's so many people here. But what I want to do is, first I want to disclose that everything that comes out of my, thank you, I have reached the other side. <laughs> all right. Wow, there's a lot of you here. And you all look so fabulous. Um, Everything that I say, honestly, I'm completely guided to say it. If I'm not guided to say it, I'll let you know it's my opinion or my experience. But usually, it's completely guided. I will, whatever comes out of my mouth, I have no control, and I honestly will not probably remember it after. Because I kind of, people tell me I kind of go into this daze, which I don't know because I don't have a mirror, but I kind of go into another state, I think, when I do this, because I can't remember anything, thank goodness, or I would have a lot of stuff going on in here. So what I'm going to do is go around the room, and I'm going to, whoever I'm guided to go to, I'm just going to go there. And then one of the things that at, we'll have a chance to go into question and answers, because um, some of you might have some questions. So the first thing I want to do, and I'm sorry for pointing, but I'm going to have to, is this lovely lady over here, and she's in the, the blue and the green blouse right here. Yes, you, dear. Could you come up here to the microphone? You have a lady here that wants to talk to you. Well, he might if the lady lets him. I have to say, you know, they're very polite on the other side. It's very often that they allow people to, you know, they'll make the way and say, come on, you need to get a, a message across. But they're in charge, so there's no guarantees on who comes through. And don't kill the messenger. <laughs> Okay, because I just give it as I get it, and that's it. So I just tell you, there's a lady that's coming through that's on the other side, and she's shorter than you. Okay? And she's coming through, I will say, um, for me, they line up like a family tree. She's coming through as a mother figure, so I hope you understand that that's... But she has, she's very spunky, okay? And she has a, a, a very interesting personality, okay? Now... Do you understand why she's showing me farmland? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Because all of a sudden I'm like, where are you from? And I'm asking a million questions, so you, can't, you probably won't know because I'm doing it in my mind. But I said, where are you from? She shows me farmland. Okay? Um, she's also showing me um, her hands dirty, which is a symbol that they worked hard. Okay? Really hard. And she also says that money did not come easy for them. Okay? She's also saying a lot of mouths to feed. Do you understand that? Okay, lots. And this is a woman who could, you know, take nothing in the fridge and make, make a feast. Do you understand that? Okay. Um, I want to see if she wants to let your husband come through because she is kind of bossy. She is. She is. She's very bossy. She has a lot of attitude. And um, I will say that she kind of runs the show over there. Okay, so she hasn't changed a lot. Um, there, there is a male, okay, there is a male coming through. Do you understand a, a great illness with him? A lot of illness? Okay, because all of a sudden I have a man coming and he's telling me there was a lot of illness and being treated and there's medication. Do you understand? Okay, because showing me a lot of prescription bottles, a lot of medication. Comes through, says to you, um, important number about, and I feel like this is wedding, like important number. And I, do you understand, like you almost made it to an important, it's like an anniversary or something, you almost made it? I don't, he's talking about perfect, a, a special number. And like he feels like he left before. And I'll leave that with you. Hopefully you understand that. Um, he says, oh yeah, you will. Okay. Okay. Sometimes they argue with me too. Unless it was his birthday. Pardon me? Might have, been his, might have been his birthday he's talking about. Well, he, he, he's not answering that. He's just saying it was significant. So if he loved his birthday, then I guess that would be significant. I don't want to make it fit, okay? I'll let you, you make it fit. But I'm just going to tell you that's what he's saying, okay? Um, he said something about there was great plans to travel. Mm -hmm. And then he, like great plans. And he feels like he... Um, he messed it up, okay? He's just saying he feels like there was more that you wanted to go see and that he kind of messed it up. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, even though he's like, it wasn't my fault. No. 
Okay. He wants to thank you because he says that you helped him. Do you understand that? Um, his crossing, he says, was very easy. Um, he says he wasn't in any pain, and then he's like, thank goodness there was medicine because it was good. Okay. Um, very, very happy about where he is right now, and he actually says that he is waiting for you to get there, but you've got a ways to go. Oh, no. <laughs> okay? You're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. And you know what? I'm just going to say this, but he did say to tell you it's okay to date. Oh. <laughs> I can't find anybody decent. You know what? They are out there. They are out there. But I, I have to tell you, prediction-wise, I see you with a younger man. <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. Hey, my dad's 80, and some of these women he's dating, they're all like 83. They're wild women. I'm telling you. All right. Um, let me see here. Okay. I know. You know what? Actually, come on up here. What's your name? Rose. Rose. Okay. Come up to the microphone. I know it's a little tall. There you go. All right. Um, you have a lot of people on the other side. Oh, yes. You do. You have a lot. Good. Thank you. Um, I just keep seeing, like, big family on the other side and here. Do you understand? Like, big family. I don't feel like you're, like, an only child or anything. I'm just saying big family. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, I'll just go to, there is a younger male okay. who's passed. Do you understand? Younger male, okay. No, I don't understand right now. You don't know now, a younger male that's passed? Mm -hmm, okay, no. I'm going to tell you there's a younger male here who's passed, and it's completely not blood related to you, but it's somebody who in your family knows this man. And I'm just going to, I have to bring it tell through. Tell me, tell me. I have to bring it through because he wants to get a message to his family, but I believe that you have either a son or a younger male that's in your family that knows this male. He was killed in a car accident. My brother. Uh -huh. Okay. I have a brother. What I want you to do is give the message, if you can, to his family that this young man's okay. 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 He was jumping around over here saying, I had to get your attention. Okay. Okay. Because he wants you to take this message. It's really important. Okay. okay. The other thing is, is you also have... Um, I'm going to go to, you have another male coming through, and it's like a father figure. Do you understand? Yes. Past of something in his chest area. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Fast, though. It's like whatever it was, it was fast because Good. he says nobody got, no one got to say goodbye. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. He wants to come through to tell you. He says, why is family not talking? There are people not talking in the family. There's somebody not talking, and, there, and it's somebody's wife, okay? He's coming through and saying somebody's wife is causing issues in the family. So it's like a, it would be an in-law is causing an issue in the family. So I want you to pay attention to that because all I know is your father really wants peace to come into the family, and he's saying that for some reason there's not peace right now. There's something is going on, and it has to do with money. Okay. okay, so I want you to think about that because I think you right. know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it has to do with money. Okay, right. the other thing he comes through to tell you is that um, you're the wise one. Yes. Okay, the wise one of the family that everybody goes to. No. But I have to tell you, he is shocked that you're at this conference. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like he literally said, I, I, I don't know why she's there. Okay? <laughs> he doesn't want to acknowledge that you're here at this conference. He's also very religious, I have to tell you that. Maybe that's a reason. It could be. He's very religious. He says that there's a lot of people praying for him, and he keeps showing me there's a little picture on a table with a, a candle next to it. Okay. So he wants to acknowledge that there's a, old, a woman that's praying to this candle My in mother, this picture. Mom. Okay, and he hears the prayer, so he wants to let her know. Thank you. Yeah, he used to sneak candy, didn't he? He has a big sweet tooth. Because he says that any time he can be near candy on the side, he like is everywhere. Okay. He loves it. I don't um, know, but yeah. There's, he's also commenting on there was a problem with his feet. Do you understand a problem with his feet? Mm. He said he had numbness in his legs, so I don't know if you... Oh, no, that's my husband. That's, oh, well, he's talking about numbness in the legs, but I thought he was pointing oh. to his feet because it was him. That's my husband, no? 
Okay, just um, be careful because I'm being shown syringes, which usually means diabetes. So you need to be very careful about that. And I kind of feel like he's probably bringing in something that he wants to let you know to be concerned. Um, I got it, but that's before he died. He was having injections. Okay. So it was but it's part of he validating me that he is the one. Okay. Chris, my husband. Okay. So a few people came through. Uh, well, yeah, I know. You're, you're, all I can say is that, you know, they're being polite and they're allowing them to come through. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. I want to go back here to the gentleman in the beige vest. It's, I mean, you would not believe how many spirits are in this room. It's like scary. It's like they're like little kids. Pick me, pick me, pick him. Okay. Um. Thank you. <clears throat> you have several people actually. But the reason that I pulled you over here is because there was a man standing behind you that says he comes to you as a father figure. Do you understand? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure. Okay. Um, all I can tell you is there's a man and there's a dog around his feet. Okay? There's a, a spirit dog around his feet. There's a man standing next to you and he says to me, he's a father figure to you. Now, I have to tell you guys something. When you're on the other side, there's no step, there's no X, and there's no adoption, okay? Right. <laughs> None of that means anything. You could have a grandmother that raised you her whole, your whole life, and she will come through as a mother no matter what because she feels she deserves the title, okay? <laughs> I get that all the time. There's too many grandparents raising their grandkids nowadays. It's amazing. Okay, so anyways. I'm just going to go to you and tell you this man is here and he says to you that he says to you, you are his son. Do you understand? I mean, you're, he's claiming to be a father to you. Okay. <laughs> well, let me ask you for everybody here. Has your father passed? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> they want to know too. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, he is coming through to tell you he's sorry. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> He's, he's, he definitely doesn't believe in this kind of stuff, okay? He is very hesitant about talking about it, but I will tell you, he, he just says to me, when I asked him how his life review was, he said it was difficult for him. Do you understand? Yeah. And it wasn't just towards you, it was to many people in the family, okay? Yes. He does, show, do you understand? Um, I have symbols for everything, so you guys will learn stuff about me as I go. I have symbols. You know, when somebody shows me their hands dirty, it means they were a very hard worker. When they show me their hands clean, it means they were kind of like an office person or a businessman or something like that. But he shows me his hands dirty, okay? That he, he, he got down and dirty and whatever it took to make ends meet. But he also shows me eggshells. Do you understand what walking on eggshells were in the family? No. Okay? Because for, for me, Eggshells means alcoholism. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Um, I grew up with a father who's an alcoholic, and we walked on eggshells my whole life. So now that's my symbol. They, they either show me a bottle of Jack or broken <laughs> eggshells. And that's what he's coming through is broken eggshells. And that's what the, I'm sorry for is to tell you that he realizes that he could have been better. But I have to tell you, the love for you is so amazing. And he is so proud of you and the fact that he was your father and he really wants to tell you that he's sorry he didn't get to say it because I don't feel like he's got to say it. Right. Okay? So just know that he is with you a lot. And he keeps showing me you with the camera. So I don't know if you take pictures or what the camera is, but he keeps showing me a camera in your hands. Do you understand that? Yeah, I used to be an amateur photographer. <laughs> okay. He, he's claiming that you need to get back into that, that it brought a lot of peace to you. Okay, and then he's, he literally, and I don't think he knows anything about digital cameras, but he's saying they're really cool now. Right. Okay, he doesn't know anything about them, but he is commenting on 
it's time for you to get a digital, really nice digital camera and start doing photography. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm just going where I'm guided, and I'm going to go to... Wow, there's a lot of dads here. There is a lot of dads here. Um, I'm going to go back to this gentleman in the um, yellowish beige button-up shirt. Yes. By the way, if I pick you and you don't want to come up, that's okay. You don't have to. Hello, thank Hi. you. Hi, what's your name? Alan Berez. Hello, Alan. I'm Marissa. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Um, you've got several people because I see a male and a female coming in for you. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to go to, do you understand having a father that's passed? Yes. He talks about a brother. Do you understand having a brother? Yes, I do. I feel like your brother's alive. He has not passed. Do you understand? Well, my father had a brother. I don't have a brother. Okay. But why? I don't feel like he's passed. Do you understand? Is your uncle still alive? Yeah, yes, he is. Okay, that's thank you. Yeah. I'm like, he's not? Okay, <laughs> got it. Okay, your father wants to come through and say, um, he, God, he says you're really smart. He says you're very intelligent, he is very proud, and he shows educated and school. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay, he wants you to know that he's, and this is just word for word, that he saw everything, that he saw what you've accomplished. Don't think that he didn't, okay? Um, but I, and you know, actually, his life review seemed pretty good, okay? Because he's telling me that he really felt like he had a fulfilled life. But when I asked him how he died, because I want to validate how he died. Um, he, he has a lot of pressure in his chest, but also very nauseous feeling. Do you understand that? And when, when I get nauseous, that usually for me means that he was being medically treated for some sort of illness, cancer, or yeah. disease. Yes, Do you he was. Yes. And he also says that it took a while, okay? That yes, it, it took did. a while. And he also is saying, that he didn't feel like he was at his best when he died. And that is hard for him because I feel like he's a very proud man, okay? But he wants you to know that, okay? He just said, tell him I have a full head of hair. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know if he didn't have one when he, but all of a sudden he's like, tell him I got a full head of hair. I'm not saying that, okay? <laughs> Sometimes they tell me things, I don't want to say it, <laughs> okay? You know what, he is, he's just going, you know what, he also says you're married and he loves your wife. Well, he was instrumental in bringing my wife and I together. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. he, he really likes her. Mm -hmm. And I know you like her too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's Polish and he was Polish, so that was a big bond right there. I wonder if that's why he was showing me sausages. I didn't want to say anything. He liked, yeah, he liked the sausage. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything about the sausage. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. That makes total sense to me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for validating that yeah. for me. The Polish, that's great. Okay. Wow. Yeah. See, when they're Italian, they either show me spaghetti or Al Pacino. Go figure. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, sure. that's how it is. He wants to tell you he loves you very much. And he says, thanks for being a fabulous son, because you really were a great son, okay? And you still are. The other thing he says to tell you is he does ride with you in your car, okay? And he does claim that, I guess you're, talking to, you're listening to talk radio, because it's a lot of news. Constantly. Okay. <laughs> He's there. He hears yeah. it. He does not like what's going on politically, let me tell you that. Yeah. Does not like it. He's very opinionated about politics. Was he when he was here? Uh, yeah, he was constantly talking about things going on, politics and the Second World War, on and on and on. Okay. Well, his opinions still stand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got to go to the lady in the hat.
I was hoping you would. You know, people have a funny way of bringing people together to get messages across. Um, what's your name? Sibella. Sibella. What a beautiful name. Thank you. Um, okay. With you, I get a female. Okay? And I have to tell you about her. Oh, well, okay, let me correct myself. There's more than one female on the other side. Okay? But this female looks kind of young. Do you understand? She's, she's, when she lines up for me, she stands to your side. And when they stand to the side, they're usually a sibling, a cousin, a friend, or a lover. But she f comes forward and back, and forward and back. So I don't know if you've lost a child, or a sister, or what, or a in-law, a sister-in-law. But this is a female who's younger, and she's standing right here. Mm. Do you understand why she would stand to your side? Because no. she's not coming through as a mother figure. Really? No. Oh. And she's young looking too. You know what's interesting though? Okay, hold on. You know, she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to be classified as old. Do you understand that? <laughs> no offense. No, no, really. Here. She's like telling me, no, no, I was like her sister. We look alike. I'm beautiful like her. Do you understand? <laughs> She's kind of vain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's vain. Okay. Um, but she doesn't want to come through as your mother. So if it's your mother that passed, I have to tell you, she's, she's talking as if she's like, no, no, we're like twins. There's no mother-daughter here. We're like best friends. Right. We're like sisters. She looks fabulous. Let me tell you. You know how you're pretty well put together? Well, she's pretty well put together. <laughs> okay. She's got like matching outfit, coordinating jewelry, the whole thing. Her hair is done, her nails are done. This is very, very high class. Do you understand? Yes. But the other thing is, is her skin is really smooth. Like she does not look her age when she passed. Um, but she is telling me that she felt her passing wasn't a very happy passing. Do you understand? Yes. Because, okay. And she, I asked her to show me a picture of her when she passed. She refuses. Right. <laughs> She literally is like, nope, won't even, I don't even want to be acknowledged she, looking she like that. She wouldn't be photographed. She d would not like that. Oh, yeah. Like she won't show me. Right. She did oh, not. Oh, yeah. Wanna. No. But she does want to emphasize that her hair looks fabulous. <laughs> okay? Like she always had her hair done. She's, oh, her hair is just totally, like, perfect. I mean, this is, and I feel like she's the queen of hairspray. Okay? I mean, just totally. She wore thick. no makeup, but she always had her hair done. Her hair is perfect. And you know what? She didn't need makeup because she looks really good. Okay, comes through to you to say, um, okay, they're being funny today. Well, she wants to talk to you about men. Um, and she, she wants to help you in that department. Right. Okay, because she's saying that sometimes you're not picking winners. <laughs> okay. That's right, exactly. Well. She's, it's like she's saying, she, she, what, what? She, she's really, um, she's going to help you with that, but she's like saying you don't listen to her and you never listen to her, okay? So now she's like, it's time for you to listen to her. And I mean, let me tell you, please listen to her because I have a feeling she will haunt me to get messages to you. I'm serious. This is a lady that doesn't stop talking. Right. Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and East Coast, what's her connection to East Coast? We're from the, we're, she's from Philadelphia, her whole family is from the East Coast, and, and I'm from the East Coast. Okay. I came here from the East Coast. Okay, she's, she's going, taking me to East Coast, so I was like, okay, what's that? Um, she liked cats also, but she says not as much as you. Cats. Cats is my sister. I don't know, she just is talking about you wearing a hat and not Oh, her. hats, I thought you said cats. No, 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 hats. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so she said she's going to help you out with the men. Right now, she says, don't date any of them. Right. Okay? She's literally saying, you have to date yourself, okay? Because she still says you're confused about what you want. And so you have to date yourself because then you'll know what you want and don't accept anything less. And she's literally saying, tell her that because I'll come spank her if she doesn't listen. 
okay? So she wants you to, to be very picky, okay? And she's just commenting on, she, she's really funny. She's like, look at her, she's just gorgeous. Isn't she just beautiful? Look at her. <laughs> And, okay, now, is she, she kind of a matchmaker with you, too, in a way? Because she's saying, is there any young men in the audience that would be interested? I mean, literally, she's funny. So, uh, you know, you can meet her in the back. Uh, but, but she can't date you. But your mom said you can get numbers. I can get what, numbers? Yeah, that's okay. She wants to come through to tell you she just absolutely adores you and loves you. And she just says, thank you so much for being there for her. Because I feel like... And what she's saying is that you did get to say goodbye to her. I did? Yeah. She says you, did you? She's telling me you got to say goodbye. For, yes. Uh, yes. Mm, complicated. I was there, but my step, but not quite, what, just before she died. Yeah. Right. But I have to tell you, she chose to die after you left because she didn't want you to see her die. Oh. Okay. She talks as if you guys, like again, she's just like, you guys are like best friends and sisters. She would not have wanted you to see her die. So she waited for you to leave. And she doesn't want you to feel guilty about that because she absolutely, I mean, she went, I mean, this is a lady who had a planner, man, and a, cal a calendar. She knew when she was doing stuff and when she wasn't. And she organized it perfectly. And she's quite proud of herself for doing that. She wants you to know that she passed for that reason, just so that you wouldn't have to see that. Oh. Okay. Thank you. She loves you very much. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Let's see. How are we doing on time? Okay. What I want to do now, and it's because I'm guided to do this, and I know I would love to talk to, you know, do a reading on every single person here, um, which you can go to my website and get a hold of me. Um, but I want to go to questions and a any questions that you have, and I'll be happy to answer. So if you have a question about anything, life, death, anything at all, I want you to come up here to the microphone and ask your question, and I'll be happy to answer what I plan. Let me explain to you, though. I, want I always do this little uh, disclaimer. How I answer questions is what I believe is from experience and from research and that I have personally done or I've personally experienced it. I am one of the biggest skeptics out there. If I don't see it, I rarely believe it. And so when I give you my, my opinion, it's what I believe through my experience and my research. So I just want to let you know that's, that's it. And no one says who, I could not even be right. You never know. Yes. Um, when one passes over, is there an average uh, uh, lifetime they spend in the spirit world before they reincarnate here? That's a great question, and I get that all the time. Um, from my interviewing them, what they have told me is it's usually around 50 years our time. The other side is a different dimension that's really close to being parallel with us. That's why they can come and go so easily. Um, but they choose when they come over. But there's no time on the other side. So, I mean, honestly, they're not sad for any of, they don't miss you, they're not sad, because as far as they're concerned, you're gonna be over there in a week. I mean, it's like quick for them. So they're like, okay, Friday, they'll be here, you know? But they could be 30 years Friday for you. So, absolutely, it's about 50 years, and usually they'll be there when you get there. Okay. And they're excited. Thank you. That was kind of my question too. I was thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, people talk about limbo. Is that the, where they stay 50 years? No. Oh, is there, what's limbo? I don't believe in a purgatory or a limbo or any of that. Okay. Okay, it's you, you cross over, you cross over. Now there are something called ghosts, which ghosts are like earthbound spirits, but I personally believe that's by choice. They choose to be here. Okay. Um, there are sometimes people will die and it's so quick that they don't even know they're dead. It's kind of like in Ghost. He's just kind of roaming around and he doesn't even know that he's dead. And they'll hang around their house and they'll wonder, you know, why these new people are in their house. But usually it's they cross over immediately. Is that the same for people that commit suicide? Suicides, are, they're gone immediately. They do not hang around. They're gone. They don't want to be here anymore. That's why they did it. On the subject of suicide, are there any acceptable suicides, for instance, people that are terminal and have lost all quality of life and have finally decided that it's time for them to go, are they also rejected? 
I don't believe that anybody's rejected, and I am, believe me, I am not condoning suicide because sometimes I feel like it's the cheater's way out. I mean, yeah, there's times when I don't want to be here, but I'm not going to do that because I have people that, you know, I don't want to hurt. But I have had suicide in my own, my family, and there is no, this one's acceptable and this one's not. Um, if, I mean, for me personally, I think somebody who's can't, dying of cancer and they're just, I'm done, they, sh they should have the choice to take themselves out. I mean, they don't want to have to go through that anymore. Absolutely. And, and I, I mean, it, it's a choice. It's a but choice. But would they have the same stigma as someone? Absolutely, yeah. Basically, when I said they're taking over the other side and they have to go through some counseling, that it, it, any kind of suicide will have to do that, even if it's, um, even if it's because they're terminally ill. Thank Most you. people that commit, you know, commit suicide definitely have chemical imbalances. They have depression. They may hear voices that tell them to do bad things. It's usually a chemical imbalance. But the people that you know say mercy killing or whatever they're going to do to themselves, it's the same thing. You know, okay. it's like breaking a contract, and you just, you know, you're there's a little penalization on that, but it's not bad. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, what crossed my mind was, um, can they access their favorite TV show, for example, or <laughs> it's a, ser a serious question, or do they need someone on the earth plane to tune it in for them if they want to? How that's, do they that's, you know what, that's a, that's a great question, because I know my mom hovers over my dad that watches Beverly Hillbillies every single day. Because that was one of her, that, you know, that in Price is Right. But basically, w the answer to your question is, is that they don't, they don't access the TV and the, the shows that they want, and they don't make somebody turn the shows on. They just eavesdrop and watch over their shoulder, okay? It's like this. I get spirits that are smokers here, and they have actually gone to the other side and said, man, I'd love a cigarette. And I ask them, what do you do? And they'll be like, I go around smokers. You know? It's like I, I have, uh, I've had a couple spirits tell me that their favorite place to hang out is AA meetings because they like the smell of alcohol in their breath. <laughs> and I'm serious. I'm serious. They, they do. So if it's a favorite show, you know, Judge Judy, they're going to be looking over someone's shoulder so they, that's watching Judge Judy. So they Judy. might do it if it's tuned in physically on the earth plane, but not directly. They don't have no. TVs on the other side. Yeah. No, but obviously it's a question as to whether they could access it that way, you know. They access it through us. Psychically, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they act absolutely. Yeah. But they will physically, in a spirit form, come down and watch television. <laughs> yeah, they will. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks. You're welcome. I had a very interesting experience one time when a friend died, but I didn't know he was dead because I spoke with him the night before and he was perfect, uh, you know. And the next morning I was in my house up in Sedona and standing in front of my sink in my kitchen, it was maybe 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I felt him like here, you know. I was like, and I even turned around and it was half the person, but like I could see through, and all of a sudden, it was gone. And, and I said, what is the matter with me? You know, I mean, I didn't drink. I was 10 o'clock in the morning. And, and, and I had that feeling. And then a few days later, I found out he died this morning. That's very common. So what, what happened was, is he actually left his body and kind of popped in just to say I'm gone and you sensed it and that's very common a lot of times um, people will wake up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. and then find out their dad died at 2 a.m. at the hospital and they don't know why they've they've woken up or um, they'll see their you know loved one standing in a doorway and they find out that they died the night before and it's their it's their way of during their crossing to be able to come and just visual, you know, be there to see you or to almost say goodbye. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, like I smelt him, I, 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 I saw him, and, and then it was gone, and I said, what is the matter? You know, I mean, it was very strange, and I didn't think, and then... The most important thing for you to know is that you didn't cause his death, and I'll tell you why, because a lot of people will have dreams of somebody dying, and then that person will die, and they instantly think that they caused it. I dreamt it, I thought about it, I made it happen, and that's not true. 
that's just a premonition that you actually had a sense that it was going to happen. So you didn't cause his death, but he was just basically stopping by to tell you, see ya, I'm going on a trip. Uh -huh. And that was it. And it was great that you could smell him and, and be able yes, to sense that. it was very, very, very strange, you know, and I saw him, but in a very, I don't know how to describe it, half see-through. Half, yes, you'll see usually an outline and you can see through them. Mm -hmm. And that is rare, I'll tell you. That is rare to be able to see that. So that's a great thing that you were able to, to see that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, oh, thank you. For the people who are um, evil, sadistic, without a conscience, what is their passing like? Well, this is what I've experienced through interviewing, is that there are different levels to the other side. There are lower levels, there are, it's kind of funny, I'll go, well, there's the middle class level, and then there's the spirit guide level, and then the angel, and the, you know, avatars, and then God, and all that. The lower levels are where there is no light, there is no love, there is no peace, and that's usually where they go. So when I've asked, well, like, what kind of people go down there, it's usually like Hitler, Jeffrey Dahmer, people that, see, when, when you're born, you're born and given free will, and you can choose the free will to be evil. And it's how you choose it, and those people don't have light in them. They just don't have it, and they have to evolve to a higher level, so they go to the lower planes. Um, do I believe that there's a hell and it's fire and there's a guy with horns? No. Um, do I believe that they're tortured? Absolutely not. Just darkness? It's just very, very dark. Then there is no ball that they would look into to see? Oh, yeah. To, oh, there is. Oh, yeah, there's a review they can on still every see. level. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, in fact, I'm very happy they have that review. That's a good thing. Because I want them to see, you know, okay. we want them to see. But yeah, oh, they get to see it all. And what's interesting is they not only get to see it, but they have to feel what their victims felt. Good, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're I'm not saying it's a punishment, it really is just the way it is. Like karma kind of thing. Kind of. Yeah, don't get me started on karma. Okay. <laughs> That's a Thank whole you. Other story. Yeah, <laughs> but it, similar, yes. Hello. Um, I got kind of a paranormal question. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I've been going up to our local cemetery, taking pictures, oodles and oodles of pictures, and we got a crypt up there, and I knocked on the door and invited it out, and I got a picture of a black shadow that appeared, and this thing followed me home. <laughs> is there, is, do I have anything to worry about? <laughs> Ask it what kind of drink it wants. Okay. <laughs> you don't have anything to worry about. Nothing um, to worry well, about. And I'm, it, it's interesting that you actually found something there because I go to cemeteries all the time and to me it's like a peaceful park. There's no spirits there. There's, I don't ever get anything there. It's, I, I'll take yeah. pictures, occasionally I'll get some orbs, but I, there's never anything there. It's just very peaceful. In fact, I like to go to cemeteries when I want to think. Um, <laughs> because there's no one there. <laughs> but for you, I don't feel like it's anything dark as far as I do feel like it's something that wanted to observe you, but I don't feel like it's what's really interesting though is I kind of feel like it's still in your home. Okay. Okay. That's, I do. But I don't that's feel not like what it's I bad. wanted to hear, but Yeah. No, no, no. I, I really do feel like it's still there. I feel like it comes and goes. And it's kinda like you just picked up a hitchhiker. Yeah. You know? The guy's like, You knocked, I answered. Okay. Okay? All right. So it's like you went there and he, you know, they answered. They're like, okay, you come. You must have wanted to invite me to dinner. I'm coming. Oh. So for you, I would really recommend that you do some smudging at your house and get some white sage and actually burn it and just tell okay. whoever's there, please go away. I only want what's for my highest good to remain and everything oh. else has to go. Okay. So I might possibly have a permanent house guest then, huh? I don't, you know what? I actually. <laughs> Now I'm making a joke of it, but, you know, he doesn't like the TV shows you watch, so he's not going to stay long. Okay. Thank you. I don't you. think he's going to stay long at all. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, we had a passing of somebody very close in our family, and everybody at some point has had some type of experience with her, um, seeing her getting the opportunity to speak with her and I haven't and I don't know if it's because I'm blocking it in some way or if there was I don't know and no kind of unfinished business between her and I 
Okay, the first thing I want to tell you is um, she's in a higher position than you. Do you understand? Is she above you like as a parent? My older sister. Okay, she seems very motherly towards you like she was, but I'm being told that you guys were really close, okay? And because you were really close, that's why you can't sense her around because when you grieve, you create a wall that's so thick that they can't even get through. And I just feel like you guys were so close that you have a wall that it, it's very thick. And you know what? When time goes by and your grief gets thinner, then that's when she'll be able to come through. So it's going to happen, but it's purely because she can't get through. Um, I sense that there was, I mean, she doesn't hold a grudge about anything. There's, there's no unfinished business. It's purely, and, and really, I feel like she's trying to get through to you. But you're so physically caught up in the physical departure and the fact that it's so final that you've created a wall that's so thick and she can't get through. Okay. But she's gonna, she'll be getting through, I mean, definitely. So it's when that grief thins out and you suddenly get to the point where you're like, I'm not thinking about her as much. You know, the minute you laugh is when you go, oh my God, I'm forgetting them, which is not true, but that's usually what people think. That's when the grief can get thinner and they can get through. Okay, we've, um, my family have kind of pulled together to help take care of her children. And we've tried to help them make decisions and to kind of guide them in the direction that we think their mother would have wanted them raised and the things she would have wanted them to know. She's given a thumbs up that you guys are doing a great job. I was worried we had made wrong decisions. No, <laughs> no. She says as long as there's love in the whole picture and that you want to protect them, it's all good. Okay, All right. so good job. Thank you. Hi, um, my mother passed. It was way back in 89, but uh, she was a very abusive and cruel person. And I'm writing uh, memoirs about our life at, during those years. And I'm at this really block, this concrete wall. And I don't know, I've had other readings, and they say, write the book, but I'm still stuck behind that wall. And I don't know if that's me or if that's my mother trying to keep me from telling her truth. It's not her, because the okay. first thing I heard from her was write it like it is. Okay. Um, she's already seen it, and she's experienced it, and she did it, so you're not hurting her at all. Okay. I feel like you're blocking her because you're afraid. There's a fear factor mm -hmm. to you getting the truth out, and also it has to do with, I feel like you fear of what some people might think. Well, yeah, she's a murderer and an arsonist and Ma Barker all the way. Okay, so it, I just, she literally is saying, write it like it was. Okay. I mean, just go Sorry, for it. Sorry, Mom, if you heard that. <laughs> no, it, you know what? She she feels she deserves mm -hmm. you to feel that way and she okay. has experienced it all in her life review she's not happy with it so she's like go for it because she says the most important thing is it's going to heal you okay and that's all she cares about right now okay okay cool thanks good luck Hi there. Um, a two-part question. One is, I was recently traveling in the south of France, and I took a picture, and in that picture, there's a clear image of the spirit on top of the uh, woman that I took a picture of. So my question is, do spirits appear to you when they want to, like in paranormal photography, for instance? And second, you know, the beginning of the seminar was great about how we're going through an awakening. Is there anything that you can share with us to help us personally awaken ourselves? Like, was that a message to me, for instance, that, hey, you know, get this consciousness more alive to what's going on in the world or something? Great questions. Um, first of all, what you are probably seeing is uh, her spirit guide behind her, because I'm being told that you can also see auras. Okay, um, if you're in the right setting, in the right position. Um, as far as being awake, I mean, the, the best thing that you can do is to literally acknowledge that you believe in it and you can do it. I mean, just by talking to me here today, I guarantee you, you have just opened up a door. So be prepared. Because most people, when they come to me for readings or they come to one of my classes, they'll go home and they'll say, what did you do to me? Did you put a spell on me or something? I got spirits everywhere. And it's because when you acknowledge the universe that you believe this is possible, they're going to send you more. 
So, and, and I feel like you're welcoming it. You're like, this is cool. And usually when people start getting it, they actually get anxiety because part of them's excited, part of them's afraid it's gonna go away and they're gonna lose it. And all I can tell you is practice it. The, the best way you can do it is practice it. So the more you read, the more you experience, the more you talk about it, and, and you're more aware, the stronger you're gonna get. Okay. And, and, and I'll tell you, there's no jewelry, there's no, there's no oils, there's no candles you can burn, there's no special outfit, there's nothing that will make you stronger. Believe me, I tried them all. There's nothing, okay? There's nothing. So okay. just be yourself and just use it. If you use it, then it's gonna just get stronger. It's like a muscle. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, I've, I'm really interested in uh, near-death experiences, and um, I've been reading uh, books and actually going online and looking at videotapes of people recalling their near-death experiences. I, I have a question. Sometimes I've heard descriptions of incredibly beautiful trees, flowers on the other side, and, and, and I've also heard descriptions uh, by some people of these uh, amazingly majestic um, celestial type buildings like libraries and stuff. And my question is, how can something that's intrinsically uh, a, on a spiritual plane have anything physical, have any physical components or physical attributes like trees do, flowers do, buildings do? I can only tell you what I've experienced through astral travel. And when I have gone over there, I have seen grass, I've seen trees, I've seen flowers that I've never seen before. I've seen colors that I've never seen before. And I have seen buildings. But I can tell you, they're not buildings in the sense of if you took a, a hammer, it would break apart. It's not a physical building. It's actually a, a building that you could probably just disappear into as you, you go into it. Um, but there, and I have spirits tell me they're building houses. I mean, I've had them say, tell her I'm building our dream house. They've built a, a tree house, you know. They're building these homes. And it's really funny because none of them have walls. And usually they're so big that the entire family can come live in them, which scares me to death. But <laughs> they do build these buildings. So I'm just telling you that there are buildings from what I've seen. Because strangely enough, when I think about uh, crossing over whenever whenever that is, there's this, uh, more of a comforting feeling if I think there's anything that I know in, in this world that'll be there, like flowers, trees, that kind of thing. Uh, also, do do, um, do pets, do animals cross over? Are there... Um... Oh, yeah. Okay. They cross over. They can also reincarnate. They, um, Like I said, you're, I, when I go over, I see my dog, and it's like I'll see my mom and my niece, and I'll be like, hey, how's it going? And then I see my dog, I start crying. Okay. I'm like, oh, these are sad eyes, you know, and it's like I get all emotional for my dog, you know, and the, but the pets are there, the dogs, the cats are all there, and sometimes they'll reincarnate, sometimes the spirit of a dog can come in your home and leave fur on your bed, mm -hmm. but they are spirits just like people. Because I've lost a cat I had for like 16 years, and I, I really miss her, so I'm hoping one day I'll see her again. Well, you're supposed to get another cat because she wants to come back in. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, hi, I have two questions, if that's okay. Okay. Um, you mentioned suicide, people get categorized. Um, my apologies. Um, you mentioned that suicide people get categorized, um, evil people get categorized. There are different cultures that say that, uh, which I disagree with completely, that suicide bombers are heroes. So the heroes and evil, how would they be categorized? And will your answer be the same as a medium from one of those particular cultures? Well, there's a couple things that I've been told through my interviews is number one, that there is no religion on the other side. There is love and only love, and that is the religion. So whatever they believe when they pass, they're believing it in a human form. Um, as far as, honestly, because ha I've actually encountered some 9-11, um, I've done some readings with 9-11, and one of them was related to one of the, the people flying the plane, is they absolutely go to the other side, and they're amongst the rest of us. In the good or bad part? In the good parts. In the good part, okay. It, absolutely, and the reason that I, I've, it's, I'll give you an example. I did a reading once on a lady who, um, she hired a guy to kill her husband in his sleep, okay? And then she went to jail because she got caught, and then she died of cancer, 
in jail. And now they're both together on the other side and they've com completely, he's forgiven her. And it's purely because, number one, you have to look at the state of mind they're in. They're not in a normal state of mind um, to think that they're going to have, uh, I don't know, what is it, 22 wives or whatever when they do this. They're not in a correct state of mind. Um, and there is forgiveness and there was a personal judgment day. But from what I'm told, that depending on their state of mind of when they did the act, they absolutely will go to the other side. Okay, thank you. It's the ones that have no remorse and they believed something so evil and they acted upon it knowing it was horrible. Yeah, I understand. Those that. are the ones that yeah. go to the lower. Okay, thank you. And can I ask my second question? Yes. Um, I've been to quite a few mediums uh, uh, similar to yourself. Um, they give me a lot of generic information uh, with the greatest respect to everybody concerned. They never ever give me specific. I mean, my mother passed away. Nobody can tell me what, for example, her middle name is, her date of birth, where she lived. Uh, and it, uh, my apologies. Um, my mother passed away, um, but no medium can tell me what her middle name was, for example, where she lived, what her bank account number was. That specific, in well, I'd like to know that myself. Um, there's no specific information, it's just generic. Why is there no specific information given when you're reading people? Well, first I want to say to you, isn't, I agree with you, I'm so frustrated because I've been asking for seven years for the lottery numbers and they won't give them to me. <laughs> and I just, it's, it's really irritating to me. And I totally agree with you because I'm always asking for names and it's funny because I say I'm not very good at names. The minute I ask a spirit for a name, there's 50 spirits shouting their names at me. So I've got names coming all over me. Um, Personally, it's probably because I haven't evolved enough in my work to be able to decipher whose name belongs with who. I can't answer for you, um, you know, to say what her name was. Um, all I know is I believe she's given me initial M, and the M means something, but that's all I'm being told. Date of birth, I would probably never have a date of birth. Um, sometimes they'll give me the month or the date. Um, but there are certain things what I've... It's, it's interesting, I've asked spirits, why do you even want to communicate with us? Well, part of it's because we want to give faith that there is life after here, and believe me, everybody on this planet needs faith, okay? Um, but the other thing is, is, is they also, they're not gonna appear and walk with us and, and be with us every single day because then there would be no, like even looking forward to going to the other side, you see what I'm saying? It's almost like the two sides would merge and we're all one big happy family. So. You may not get the information that you want, and it could be because they're testing your faith. There's reasons for everything. And I can't tell you why some of those mediums can't give you that. I rarely give date of births. Um, I, I rarely get names. Occasionally I do. I can usually get the dog's name. I don't know why. But <laughs> it, it, just, it just depends on, on you know, what's coming through. But I will tell you this, there's not a psychic medium out there that's 100% accurate. It's not possible. I agree, I've yet to meet one, with, with due respect, obviously. Yeah, it's not, because number one, we're human, and we have egos, just like everybody else. Okay. And so we can absolutely give incorrect information. Okay, thanks for your time. You're welcome. When 9-11 happened, I spent quite a few days after that in meditation trying to help those spirits move to the light. What about the folks that died so suddenly in that uh, terrible tragedy? Do you have anything about what, how those folks fared? Literally what I was told is that their souls were taken before those planes ever hit and before uh -huh. those buildings ever collapsed. And I've noticed it as a theme with people that die. When people die in a car accident, they'll say to me, I didn't feel a thing. Or I stood on the side and I watched it. It was horrible. Um, they. It's, it's almost like a self-protection that we have. Our soul can be ripped right out of our bodies before any pain, any fire, anything. There was no feeling at all. It was literally like, although I do, they were telling me the tunnel was crowded that day. It was really crowded that day. Yeah. I just had a lot of compassion for those souls at that time. It's... That's a great, it's, that kind of leads me into something because, every, you know, there's certain psychics out there that will say, um, you know, there's an Akashic Records and everything's, you know, meant to be and you plan everything and you write your life, you write every instance and I don't believe that. I believe you're given free will, I believe you might have a few themes that you're coming here to learn something, but your free will can affect somebody else's free will and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so I don't believe that you pre-write your entire life. If that's the case, why do I have to live it? 
if I've already pre-wrote it, okay? So with that, I don't feel like those people pre-wrote that they were all gonna go up on 9-11, but I do believe that they went up, there was no pain involved at all. And I, I, from what I've been told by a few that died in that, is that they didn't even know what happened until they got to the other side and were shown what happened. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last night I had a, a very vivid dream, I guess. It was a dream. And in this dream, there was this thin column, pencil thin column of like smoke that was coming towards me and I knew it was a ghost. And it scared the hell out of me. And because I don't know anybody that's, you know, it didn't make any sense to me. If something was going to show up, I would think it would have been an ET at this conference, not a ghost. And uh, I cried out in my sleep for help and then I told it to be gone. Um, and I just wondered if you had, it, it was so out of, this has never happened to me before, and so I just wondered if you had any insight. I feel like it's gonna happen again, so let me warn you, it's gonna happen again. I don't feel like that um, they mean any harm. I feel like coming here to this conference, you've kind of opened a doorway to say that you do believe some things that are unexplained are possible. And I just, I, I feel like actually that it was, um, it was, uh, let's see, I want to say grandmother on your father's side. Oh, that would make me feel better. <laughs> Does, yeah, nice, nice lady. Nicest lady wouldn't hurt you at all. Okay. okay? But I do feel like more is going to happen. And just, you know, be happy about it and say, that's cool. But when they come to you like that, ask them what they want. Okay. I mean, ask them their name. What, how can I help you? That's what I want. How can I help you? <laughs> what and what do you want? Not, not try not to be scared. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi. When you when you first uh, developed this uh, or and got enlightened, how did you control it and start turning it off? And is there any spirits that you just don't want to talk to? They just keep bothering you. How do you how do you deal with that? That is such a great question. Um, when it first happened to me, it was out of control. Part of me was so excited, and I was like, "This is cool. I want it to be strong." Part of me thought, "Oh my God, it's going to be taken away. I'm never going to be able to do it again." Part of me thought, "My husband's going to think I'm nuts. He's going to have me committed." Okay, so it was crazy, and I actually ended up going into this psychic store to this lady and saying, make it stop, make it stop, you know, tell them that, and she literally said to me, you have to set hours, and I'm like, what? She goes, you have to be firm with them, and I, I did. I literally said, okay, between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock at night, you can come and I'll talk to you, because then my family's in bed, that's my quiet time, and that's, they would come, and they respected me, and that's the way it is. You have to be firm. You have to let them know when and, and where you're willing to talk to them. And I'll give you an example. It's like if you've seen Lisa Williams, the, the psychic, she has the show or whatever. And you know how she always wears her hat? She has this thing where she puts a hat on and spirits aren't allowed to talk to her with her hat on. And I have clients that will say, oh, I saw Lisa Williams at the grocery store. She had her hat on. Now, I hate hats. So I wouldn't do the hat thing. But it's the intention that you have. There's an intent that you say to them, this is only when I'm willing to. Um, talk to you and believe me they'll respect it because they want your help. Thank you. So be firm. Hello. Hi. I, I had a brother who uh, passed away in prison and they said that he was uh, right in that okay. uh, they said that uh, he committed suicide but uh, me and my family members believe that he was murdered. Is there anything you could tell me about that? I feel like he was poisoned. I don't know how he died, but I, and I'm not, I don't feel like he's here right now, but I feel like I'm being told that it was not suicide, that it was absolutely foul play. And I feel like, um, I feel like there's a cover-up of some kind. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. How accurate have you been at teaching? How, how how accurate have you been at teaching people to learn to do this on their own? And meaning, what success rate have you had? Like, in the teaching five out, people, five out of ten would learn how to do it on their own. Give me a second. And secondly, do you think there is wisdom to learn from them? Are they wiser on the other side? Should we learn some stuff from them? Is there any practical use in it? Okay. The first answer to your question is. Um, 
No, wait, what was your question again? Uh, how successfully can you teach others to do that? Actually, you know what? I would, I would have to say I'm probably about 98%. Good, so we can learn to do that ourselves. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And the Very people that come to me not only amaze themselves, but may, they blow me away. They're amazing. But the ones that can't get it are the ones that come every single week <laughs> and say, I still feel like I'm making it up, and I just... I just think uh, I'm talking to myself, and those are the ones that are analytical, and I say, uh, I'm, you know what, until you can get your ego and leave it at the door, you are never going to get it. Oh, boy. Yeah. So you've got, <laughs> and I will tell you, it feels like you're making uh, this up. I'll be on a radio yeah. show for three hours doing 36 readings, and I, you feel like you're making it up because that's how the communication yeah. is. And then the second part to your question was, um, uh, are they, what, do we become wiser? When we cross over, do we can we attain wisdom from them that would be bigger than if they were to be alive here? You see what I'm saying? They're Are definitely they smarter because what happens is is you come here and you're kind of like in a fog. You don't your memory's wiped, and when you cross over to the other side, you're literally remembering what you've always known. So you are definitely wiser. They're not going to come though and give you a huge education. Definitely they'll come and they'll censor. I mean, they'll come through and you'll, people will channel books and channel cures for diseases through them, but mm -hmm. like, you know, just your grandma and grandpa coming or whatever through, they're not going to really teach you anything. They do not have access to divine wisdom and knowledge. Okay. No, they don't. Thank you. Then I'm I'd have take, the lottery numbers. I'm going to take your session. Okay. My name is Duane, and my wife passed away in April, and uh, I felt that sometimes the way I, I had to ask her to try and work at staying, I may have put a lot of stress on her and more pain. <laughs> you know what, you're, she seems like to me, um, she's a little lady, isn't she? She seems little to me. Maybe it's because I'm way up here, but she seems little. She is, um, one of the things that I get about her is that she was afraid to leave you. Do you understand? Because, and it's not that she's tooting her own horn, but she literally thinks like you can't survive without her. <laughs> and that she just did a lot for you. And she, I mean, and, and I see this a lot in marriages. She really felt like she was the saving grace. She was the rock of the family. And she held out to the end because she was afraid to leave you alone. Okay? But her love and respect for you is huge. And I will tell you this, she's amazed you've done as well as you've done. Okay, especially when it comes to cooking. Okay, but she says that she lays in bed at you, with you at night and watches you sleep, listens to you snore. She is with you all over the place and follows you around, okay? And she is waiting for you, but she wants you to do good with the time you have here. And she wants you to know there is no unfinished business, okay? There is nothing more you could have done. And she's extremely thankful to everything you did do for her, okay? Do you understand her not being at the end of her death, like mentally not being there, okay? Mentally not being with it? Because she tells me everything was really foggy in her mind. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes. She says she lost track of time, but that it was, I don't know who it was, but she says somebody told her it's okay to go. I did. You freed her when you said that, okay? Because she wasn't going to go until you said it. And there's others that said it too, though. Do you understand a child saying that to her? Because she says somebody said, Mom, it's okay to go. Probably her daughter, too. Okay. She just wants to thank you for that. Well, they, what, they overdosed her with uh, morphine at the end. And I think she left about three or four days prior to uh, the body. Well, the morphine, um, well, she does show me watching you from up above. So she was definitely out of her body when you were holding her hand. Okay. But the morphine actually gave her the will to die. It let her release and let go. So, it, I mean, and that's a, that's a blessing. Yes, a godsend. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Marissa. Could I say thank you for sharing your gift and sharing your light? I'm thank sure it you. took a lot of courage and vulnerability when you were first experiencing these things. 
my family, my immediate family. Thank you. My immediate family has experienced a lot of loss and not a lot of closure, and I just wondered if there's anything that you could tell me or... Sorry. <clears throat> you know, I actually am being... I am being guided to tell you that I will talk to you after this. Thank because you. Because there's more than I can say right here. Thank you. Okay, so come find me. Hi, I have a question. Um, I lost like my whole family with like in a year and a half. Um, my husband, my mother, my father, my sister, my grandmother, everybody. My sister died on the way to the hospital to see my mom the day she went into a coma. But my question is, when my mom went into a coma, and I wouldn't let them put her in a nursing home, I took her home and took care of her for eight months till I finally made them turn everything off and you know, had to get a court order and have them turn everything off and everything. But when they're in a coma like that, she and they've just there. got a, they're not there, she are they? She wasn't there. She hated it. Okay. She was there about the first maybe two months, and then she was like, I'm out of here. Okay, because- I'm so not gonna stay in here, she was gone. Yeah. And it's like they want to be able to shut their bodies down. Yeah, because she would have never wanted to be there like that, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, they just wouldn't, they, they just tried to keep her alive on machines and stuff, and she would not. Our body's really heavy, and it's very confining. And for her to not be able to move, because I feel like she's a go-getter. She's somebody in her life that was with it, and she was gone already. She was gone okay. for a long time. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, when my mother died, uh, some people came into the house that were nurses uh, for her husband, and uh, they stole some uh, jewelry. And um, sometime later, I ran into a lady um, that had a piece of jewelry that looked like one of my mother's pieces, and she said she had bought it on eBay the same year. I was wondering if it is the same piece or not, because the woman was very kind to go ahead and give it to me. I believe it is the same piece. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And your mother had something to do with you getting that back. I thought so. Absolutely. Hey. Hi. Um, so I just had basically a question about uh, your experiences with dealing with entities not necessarily from here. Um, and, you know, what are some of the messages that they give to people here? And how do you, I guess, since they would be from a place where you wouldn't necessarily have the same symbols, I guess, to uh, interpret things. How does that come through and how does that all work, I guess? That's a good question. I talk to people from all different countries and they speak completely different languages and I only speak English. So they know when they come to me that they have to speak my language, okay? And a lot of times when it's visual, they'll show me images and pictures. Um, sometimes I get complete dialogue Usually when they're from another country, they'll give me a little bit of um, an accent or they'll tell me something, like spaghetti, that they can speak another language and I'll mention they can speak another language, but they know that they have to come on the terms that I can understand. As far as ETs coming to me, it's complete dialogue in English that I would know. And I believe that physical ETs can also speak our language completely. Okay. Um, maybe just one more thing. Is there anyone coming and uh, talking to me <laughs> from somewhere else? Um, I'm only know as I'm being told that you have an implant and that you're being observed. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> I I have a I have a peculiar question. Uh, maybe it's the wrong forum, but. Per periodically something comes over me mentally like uh, like I'm almost uh, have a split mental image and I and this is it's sober you know there's no no substance abuse or anything but it doesn't affect my life to the point if I I don't lose consciousness it doesn't make me do different things but it but it's a kind of an unnerving thing you know it, it'll be maybe an earlier period in my life it isn't particularly with people but it's uh, it, it just is like a split mental image okay well a couple things I feel like you're being you're 
literally leaving your body and your body's going, no, don't go, and it's pulling it back. So I feel like you're on this rubber band going back and forth and that what's happening is when you leave your body, there's an energy transfer and when you are pulled back, you're going into a lower energy because your soul's on, your spirit's on a high vibration and your body's a low vibration and you're being sucked in and when that happens, you're being shifted with all these pictures. You're being thrown all these pictures. And actually, you need to channel the pictures and by doing that, you need to ask about them. You need to ask what does it mean and start getting to the bottom of it. And when you don't get an answer, like if I, you ask a question, you don't get the answer, keep asking it to the point where it's a yes or no answer so that you can do the process of elimination to find out what it means. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Last two. Yes, I don't have a question about a particular person, but rather, in general, can you make contact with those uh, spirits who were inventors or people who died under mysterious and very suspicious circumstances when they were ready to introduce a free energy technology or disclose some something that's going on in the government. Uh, it, can you do that in a general way, if, if a person had a specific name? I have, um, I've actually spoken to um, famous people that have passed, like Elvis Presley was one of them, but it was because I was actually talking to his cousin, doing a reading with his cousin. And he came. Um, as far as like Albert Einstein or, or somebody who, I mean, I know I've talked to um, Paola and, and I've talked to some of the um, NASA people that have passed that knew a lot of information. As far as somebody in, like inventors or knowing knowledge, I'm not smart enough to decipher what they're probably going to tell me <laughs> because of some of the technological things that they want to show me. Or if they're, if they're records like Stan Meyer, Stanley Meyer and his water to energy cars and things like that, if there are missing records that are being kept somewhere away from the population, could you identify that? I can usually, if they cooperate with me, I can usually tell you where to find things because I work with missing person and murder cases. So I can usually tell you where to find things, where to look, and who's responsible. But again, I only give what I get. So if it's up to whoever wants to come through, if they want to share that with me, or if a lot of times they don't want to share certain things because people will be in danger if they do. And I've dealt with that in murder cases and they will not share because they don't want their family to be involved because their life could be in danger. But it, I would have to sit with you and say who can you know, come through. But I mean, anything's possible. They're in charge and if they want to come through and give the information, they will. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. My name is Ray, I'm from Brazil. First, thanks for your, your time. Um, in 1987, my brother who was 16, he killed himself. And I was wondering if you have anything to tell me about him. Um, he feels completely misunderstood. You know, he's telling me that when he was growing up, he didn't feel like anyone understood him, like he was different. And, and one of the things he's saying, and I feel like this has to do with your father and him, that he felt like he wasn't good enough and that he couldn't, I don't, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he feels like it, no matter what he did, it wasn't good enough. And he felt very frustrated and very misunderstood. And he um, had great depression and that he literally just couldn't stand being here anymore because he couldn't see a future. He couldn't see far enough ahead in his life to actually see a future or know what he wanted, and that's why he exited. Okay, I, when I asked him how he passed, he says he doesn't want to talk about it because it's painful. He shot himself. It's usually hanging or, or gun, they don't like to talk about it because it's very painful. So, but I know that what he says is that as a brother, he couldn't have asked for better and that he, um, he loves you very much and that he, his life review, when he saw the after effect, he literally at one point wished he wouldn't have done it. Yeah, okay. he was alive for five days after he shot himself and uh, a psychic told me at the hospital that he, he was trying to stay. He wanted to stay, but I feel like it was too far gone. Yeah, he and it would have been, he wouldn't have lived a quality life anyways, and he knew it. 
okay? But he felt that hanging out and sticking it out long enough would give everybody a chance to say goodbye, but I don't feel like he was able to speak during any of that no. time at all. Okay, well, good Thank luck. You. He's He's definitely with you. Thank you. Um, I think we're done, is that right? One more, come on up. Thank you very much for all your wonderful work that you're doing. You're doing absolutely marvelous. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Thank it's you. Interesting. It's fantastic. Um, my question to you is, you have worked with uh, murder cases, etc. Has Spirit told you anything about the disappearance and abduction of Madeleine McCann, the British uh, girl? I haven't heard anything. You haven't heard anything? No, absolutely not. I, I actually don't watch the news. I don't watch the news at all. And I have people all the time coming to me. There's a couple reasons I don't watch the news. Number one, it's depressing. <laughs> and, and number two, if somebody comes to me with a case, I don't want to be tainted of what, I, what the news has already said to me. I want it to be completely raw so that I can actually get what I'm getting and not what maybe news has portrayed. Mm -hmm. So I don't watch the news very often at all. Um, I, so I have no no okay. information on that at have all. Have you heard of the Madeleine McCann case at all? Absolutely no, not. Not at all. Never heard of it. Well, if you if you do hear anything from Spirit, there is a Madeleine McCann uh, website, and obviously I would ask you to any information at all would be valuable. Email at me. I will. Yeah. Email me. Absolutely. <laughs> thank That's you very great. much. Okay. Thank you. Well, I want to say thank you very much for for being here and for listening to me, and. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.